Hi there. As a breeder and a JGHV judge, I often get asked about what kind of training should I be doing with my puppy when I'm not sure what kinds of things to be doing at different ages. And of course, there are several ways to answer that question. There are many different ways to train a dog. But I thought I might put together this video just to share the basics of raising a Deutschstrahler puppy, particularly if you're going to be testing him or her within the JGHV system. But specifically, I wanted to focus on those really key time intervals. What should we be training at what age? When is it important to introduce your puppy to different things? So obviously there are a ton of things you could be doing with your pup well above and beyond what I'm going to present in this video today. But these things are what I consider to be the bare minima that everyone with a draught hard puppy should be doing. Of course, time of year might influence some of your training objectives. For instance, you should get your puppy into the water and swimming as soon as possible. However, if you're in Nebraska in January, like I am right now, I'm not going to introduce my puppy to water yet because I want it to be a positive experience. So make sure that as you're introducing each of these items, you're making it a fun, positive experience for your puppy. So today's video is going to focus on training advice for a three-month-old Deutschstrahler puppy. Um, hopefully next month then I'll put together a video for what you can be doing with a four-month-old. But just to introduce you to the model that I'll be using for the videos today, uh, this is 12-week-old Enzo von Bruhaus on the right there. And just for scale, I've got my other almost two-year-old draught, Liesl von Kohansi, sitting there beside him. So hopefully you've got an equally cute uh, three-month-old draught hire that you're about to begin working with. And you'll find this video series helpful for that. All right, now that we've jumped into the introduction, I want to move on to what kind of general manner should we be working with with three-month-old puppies. Obviously, your puppy should learn its name. If he doesn't already know his name, that should be a strong emphasis for you. Just make sure you're saying his name every time you give a command to that puppy. Really needs to know it so that you can communicate with him. Um, the next thing that you want to make sure you're working on is housebreaking. Most of you have probably already had your puppies for a few weeks at this point, so hopefully housebreaking is going really well where they're learning to only go to the bathroom outside of the house. Uh, but if not, keep working on that. And even if they haven't had an accident for a week or two, continue to watch them. Accidents can happen for even up to a month after their last one. So housebreaking should be going well. Um, and then the next thing that I want to jump into is crate training. And I actually have a different video clip we're going to jump to for that. So sit tight. We'll switch gears. All right. Crate training is a super important aspect of raising any puppy. You should be crating your puppy every night when you go to bed or probably every day as you go to work as well. Anytime you can't supervise the dog, it should be crated. Shh. I like dogs that are quiet in their crates. So if you have a dog that's whining like this, you know, we need to issue some corrections. Enzo is really good in his crate when people aren't in the room. When people are in the room, he can't understand why we could possibly leave them in there. So this is a good learning opportunity. Shh. The other thing I like to teach with crates is that they should never come out until they're quiet, but also they should never come out until they're released with your release command, whether that's a tap on the back of the head or whatever other physical cue you've decided to use. This could save your dog's life. I've seen so many people in hotel parking lots that just open the crate door and the dog just bolts out. Or even when you're hunting, if you're next to a road, you don't want the dog bolting out. You want them waiting in the crate until you can release them and possibly snap a lead on them. So, you are going to be teaching your three-month-old puppy not to exit the crate unless they're tapped. So again, we've worked on this with Enzo. If your puppy starts to step out, just slam the crate door shut. You know, we don't want to injure them, hit them in the nose or paw, but only open it a little bit. And again, I'm getting to the point now where I can open it all the way. He knows he's not supposed to exit until he's tapped. You ready? Okay. Good boy! So this simple trick that you're going to do multiple times a day, every time you let them out of the crate, could potentially save their life. Yeah. Raising a new puppy isn't all about obedience. There are some other things to keep in mind as well. So for instance, super important for your puppy to get used to people looking at his physical attributes. His ears, paws, muzzle, really any other part of his body. So let's jump to another video clip to talk about how you can be introducing your puppy to this concept of having people inspect physical attributes. So in addition to all of the obedience and all of the training that you want to start introducing your three-month-old draw hard to, you'll also want to incorporate some basic manners. 
And one thing that works really well when your puppy is really tired or sleepy is to start getting them comfortable with you manipulating their paws, their ears, and their muzzle. And we want to do this for several reasons. You want them used to you messing with their paws because eventually you're going to be clipping toenails, or you probably already are. So you want them comfortable with that. You want them comfortable with their ears being manipulated because people are going to be checking them for tattoos. And then also a lot of dogs, especially that spend time in the water quite a bit, are going to be susceptible to ear infections. And then finally, we want to make sure the pup's used to you manipulating their muzzle because you're going to have judges checking their teeth at every test. And your vet will also really appreciate it if your puppy is okay with them having hands in their mouth. So right now we can see Enzo's tired. We've had some training today. So now that he's sleepy, now is the time to just grab his foot. And I'm not actually going to clip his toenails right now, but I just want him used to me like individually grabbing each toe, just seeing that it's not a big deal. Yeah, you can grab each foot. You can work through all four feet. Again, do it when the pup's tired. They're less likely to think we're playing and bite at you. We'll also check the ears and make sure that he's used to getting nice and open. If he does get an ear infection, you're going to be spraying right in there. So the pups need to be used to having their ears manipulated. Give him a little massage to make this an enjoyable experience. And then finally, what might be most important for testing situations is they're going to have their bite checked a lot. So we want to get him used to just our hands around his face and muzzle. And if we can, just start peeling back the lips. I'm not actually going to count his teeth right now. He still has puppy teeth and, you know, checking his bite per se. But just anytime you notice that your pup is getting really sleepy and it's mm -hmm. nap time, or even if they're dead asleep, um, I've done that too with particularly active or mouthy puppies. Just wait till they're asleep and then we can start just getting them comfortable with us having our hands on them. You don't want to make it a big traumatic experience and if he starts to fight you at all just back off we just want him to see that this isn't a big deal but as soon as he's calm again we'll just pull him up i'm not even looking at anything i just want him used to my hands being there and recognizing that it's no big deal so you can see he still kind of wants to mouth me he's not quite sleepy enough yet but another little easy exercise you should be doing with every three month old puppy and finally, as we wrap up this general manner section, I want to touch on just other house rules that you may have. And these could obviously differ quite a bit from house to house. But hopefully all of you are in agreement that your drought heart puppy should not be jumping on people or biting people or biting your other dog. So this is something you should be working on really hard right now. Uh, make sure that you're giving either a verbal and or physical correction every time the puppy jumps on a person or tries to bite at them. At our house we also have a no jumping on furniture rule so this is a great time for me to keep working on that. Again I will try to use a verbal correction and if that is not helping then we will move to a physical correction to teach the puppy that he's absolutely not allowed to jump up on furniture or even paw at the furniture. And then finally in my house I also have a no playing with other dogs in the house rule. As a household that often has multiple dogs in it and someone who works from home a lot, I just I cannot have the dogs roughhousing, wrestling, playing chase, playing keep away, running around the house with each other. So at our house, we're teaching all of our dogs that they can do all of that kind of fun stuff outside in the yard together. But once they come in the house, uh, they need to just find a spot to quietly relax. We do have a number of toys. So of course, they can select whatever toy and play quietly with it. So decide with your family what you want your house rules to be and start enforcing them now. You need to set expectations now while the puppy is young so that they can build up uh, an appropriate routine. You know, dogs are such creatures of habit. So if it's something you're not going to want to do the dog to do when it weighs 50 or 80 pounds, you need to start that now when you just have this 20 pound little three month old puppy. All right, next, I would like to jump in some general obedience that you can be working on with your puppy. And to start that, I've got another little video clip that right. we'll jump. I'm here today with 12-week-old Enzo. He's a Deutsch Strongheart puppy. And today we're going to talk a little bit about the general obedience you can start working on with your new puppies at home. Enzo, I think like with any dog, we want to teach them sit, stay, down, come, and heal. Those five commands are something that every puppy should know. Enzo hasn't done a lot of healing work, so you'll get to see him learn that in real time. Some of these other commands he's got quite a bit of practice with. So Enzo, ready? Come here, buddy. Come here, sit up. 
All right, Enzo's super food motivated. So hopefully your pup is too. I just have a treat pouch. I've just got dry food in my pocket. Enzo, come here. Sit. Just hold the food above their head. Don't let them have it till they sit. Ugh. Ready? And it's nice to go into a down right away from sit. It's always easier. I just use a gesture again. Got two pieces of food in my hand. Ready? Set. Good. I already was kind of using that trilling sound with my lips. That's because I kind of skipped saying down and went straight ahead to uh, halt is the command I'm going to teach all of my dogs where when you use the P end of the whistle, they lay down with it. I like to teach my dogs too that I don't necessarily give a stay command. Uh, once I tell them sit or down, they should remain sitting or laying until they're released. Ready? Okay. Good boy, come on. Keep it light. Good job, buddy. All right, let's sit. Good. Might give him a reminder that he has to stay this time. If your puppy breaks, just go back and correct them. Make them sit and wait a period of time. Enzo, come here, buddy. Good job. Sit. Every time you call them, have them sit as soon as they get to you. It's important for them to get used to sitting every time they come to you. You'll thank me later on when you're in force fetch in their delivery game. Ready? Sit. Good boy. Stay. tell we've worked on stay quite a bit with him so he's pretty good at that ready come here good job sit good all right so we just kind of did quick little drills with sits down calm <clears throat> and stay Let's do a little bit of healing work. It's important to start this early. It's so nice to have a dog that heals well, especially when you get to the VJP where you might be walking for a few miles with your dog on lead before you find rabbits. All right, come here. Come here. Come here. Again, he doesn't really have this on much. It's okay. We'll learn. Mm, we're not going to play right now, though. All right. I got to get him refocused on food. So I'm going to remind him that I've got food. Get his attention. Good. Ready? Heel. Come on. Here. Gotta help him forget about the leash real quick. Here. Sit. And every time you stop, have the puppy sit. Look how quickly he forgot he's got a leash on. Heel. Come on. Come on. Don't let him grab the leash. I'm just jerking it out of his mouth when he does. Come on. Keep up. As they get older, it's going to be more of a problem of them trying to uh, pull ahead of you. When they're little like this, they tend to want to just stop. Ready? Let's go. Come on. So pat your leg. Give them some sort of physical cue. Good. No, nope, don't follow the camera. Come here, buddy. Come here. <laughs> Come on. Good job. Incorporate some turns. Come on. And then we stop. Good. <clears throat> I always just start this in the house. You can go pretty quickly. Heel. Come on. Heel. Sit. The more times you stop and have them sit, the better they'll get at paying attention to you because they recognize that they've got to move with you. You don't want them ever getting ahead of you, but again, with puppies this young, it's more that they're behind you. Ready? Heel. Let's go. Good job. Good, good. Usually they figure out the sit part really quickly if you teach them at this age. Ready? Yep. Yeah. Come on. Let's go. Come here. Come on, catch up. Good boy. There we go. And just because it's the most important command that we'll ever teach, being a halt command, we might as well take an extra opportunity down.
Okay, come here. Good job, buddy. Good. Good job. Great. Well, that is a quick little intro to the five basic obedience commands that every two month old puppy could be working on. All right, we've just talked about general obedience with your puppy, and to most people, hopefully that does mean commands like sit, stay, down, come, and heal. Uh, since we're training in the German system, we also introduce you to halt, which is basically being able to blow, the, blow a whistle to get the dog to lay down in any situation, whether they're chasing a deer or about to break from a point. Uh, or just about to run across a busy street or parking lot, halt is one of the best commands you can teach your puppy. But now I want to introduce a different idea as we talk about the importance of teaching commands, and that is that you should also be teaching your dog a release command. Super important. You'll want to use it when you let them in or out of doors, in or out of crates. We use them when we release them for meals and also just to release them from any sort of stay command that we've given. So let's cut to another video clip to talk about teaching your puppy a release command. All right, another thing that I think is really important to teach a young puppy is some sort of release command. They need to know when, they're, when they've completed the command or when they can progress forward. So one of the best places to teach this is when you let them in once they've been outside. So here we've got our patio door. We're gonna let Enzo back inside. Our release command that I've always used is just a light tap on the back of the head where the dog knows that then they can, they're can they excused to come inside, get out of their crate, be released from a command, etc. So let's go ahead and give that a shot here. We've also tried to teach Enzo that he must sit and wait to be released before he comes in or out of any door, whether it's an exterior door or his crate. So let's make sure that he follows through. Enzo! Uh-uh. Sit. So we've got him seated. Now we'll give him the release command of a tap on the back of the head. Okay. Good boy. Good job, buddy. All right, come here. Come here. Right here. Come closer. Face the camera. <laughs> Sit. Good. So anytime we release him from a command, we'll use that release too. So we'll blow him down into a halt. we call him with the come command or more likely we'll come back and release him okay good boy so we use this a lot during feeding times as well so we'll call him over we'll blow him down on a halt and then we'll release him to go eat so work on that with your puppy whether it's a tap on the back of the head some people just say the word okay i don't like to just use a verbal command because pups anticipate that and you're going to have issues with steadiness later in the field if they're anticipating you saying a word much much easier later on for them to be steady when they're pointing uh, or waiting for a retrieve if they're used to waiting until you tap them on the head You've all purchased your draught hire because you're interested in hunting with that dog in the field. So of course, retrieving is going to be a very important part of that dog's life. So I like to start with retrieving drills in the house right away to build that really strong foundation for where that pup is going to go in the field. So let's jump to another video clip to talk about simple drill that you can do in the house to work on your dog's retrieving at this young age. All right, the main reason that most of us got a draught hard puppy is because we want to take that dog hunting. And for most of us, that's going to mean a lot of retrieving opportunities over the course of the dog's lifetime. So I think it's really important to instill some important habits now while we've got these three month old puppies and build a really nice foundation that will alleviate all the bad habits we have to break later. So I like to work on retrieving a lot just in the evenings when I'm sitting in the living room, in my spot on the couch. So I always just keep just a sandwich bag with some dry food sitting here so that it's really easy for me to do puppy work while we're sitting here. So the first thing I like to do with retrieving is we make sure that we have puppy sitting, which he already is. We've got his attention and I want him to get in the habit of staying and waiting for that release before we throw him. Ready? So you excited? You want it? And then when they get back to you, have them sit, stay. Good job. 
So he dropped the toy, but that's actually preferable to me at this point. That's super easy to fix and force fetch later on. The more important habit to build is that every time they come to you, they bring you something, they sit. And then of course, I'm also giving them this food reward because I want them to learn that every time they bring me something, they'll get a treat. So that's the other reason why I like having this food close handy here, because as we're watching TV in the evening, if he just happens to pick up a toy somewhere else in the house and bring it to me, I want to reward him for it. And I've had other puppies that just start you know, collecting toys from all over the house and I'll have a whole pile of toys at my feet just because they quickly figure out if I bring mom stuff, I'm gonna get some food. All right, let's try it again. Come here. Come here. Get up, buddy. We always start from a seated position. Whether you're gonna be in the duck blind and sitting, sending them from a sit or in a testing situation, most of the time they're gonna be starting at a sit. Get his attention. take too long if you're just doing this you know a few times a night as you're watching tv they get really good about sitting every time they come to you and like i said you'll eventually have dogs to start bringing you stuff because they want a treat so simple easy exercises you can do every day to help your puppy become a, a solid retriever remember in the intro to this video i talked about how a lot of these things might be weather pending so here's where we get to a big one where normally i would tell you you should take your three month out puppy out and get them swimming and into the water right away. However, I don't have a video clip to show you because it is too cold for my particular puppy right now. But let me just touch on what you would do, assuming you've got a puppy and you've got ideal conditions for introducing that pup to the water, i.e. the water is warm. <laughs> so first off, make sure it's a fun experience. Don't put too much pressure on your puppy. You should be using a happy voice and you want to you're wanting to get that puppy swimming by using whatever means necessary. With young dogs, I like to use Cheetos. The big fluffy ones float much better on top of the water than the crunchy ones. So you can feed your puppy one or two Cheetos so they know that they're delicious. And then you can toss them into the water to gradually get the pup wading out to the point where he needs to swim if he wants to eat another Cheeto. Uh, you can also use a pheasant wing. will float nicely on water. Or you can use a piece of thawed game that's size appropriate, something like a pigeon or quail, something easy for a puppy to grab and be able to swim. I start with fun stuff like this before I transition over to dummies. Or you can also just put on shorts or waders and you can walk into the water and coax the puppy in. Uh, that, that can work as well. So again, if it's warm out, you should definitely be thinking about introducing your puppy to swimming as soon as possible. But we're gonna skip that for now because I'm not able to do that with Enzo. So next, let's talk about introducing your dog to using its nose, which is, of course, incredibly important for all hunting situations. So let's jump to another clip to talk about how to introduce your puppy to using his nose. Since you all purchased your drought hire puppy so that you could go hunting, I think it's super important that as early as you can, you start introducing them to the field and the woods so that they can build confidence in using their nose to find fun stuff. This doesn't mean you have to go out and plant birds every day. Ah, ah, sit. Rather, it just means you just need to take them for a walk. I start working on whistle work right away when I go for walks with the dogs too. So I gave them just a little go whistle. I figure if I teach them halt where they have to stop, I should teach them go where they can continue on super handy when they're pointing hen pheasants so you don't get to shoot at and you want to release them. But I also use it to release them for hunting. But you can see his range is really close because he's three months old. Doesn't really know what he's looking for, but he's excited to get out and get around. And the more you can get your new puppy out and exposing them to all the different smells and sights, the more confident they'll be so that when you do go to plant birds, It'll be such a new experience for them. That smell will really jump out against everything else they already know so well. And because you've gotten not just a bird dog puppy, but a versatile dog puppy with your draw heart, I would really encourage you too to not just take puppies for walks in fields, but make sure you're getting them out into the woods too right away. So we're gonna enter the woods here on a little bit of a game trail. I've had some client dogs come to me that have only ever been in the field and as we start VGP training with them, 
they have a lot of distractions if they're just not used to all the smells and particularly the sounds in the woods. So it's super important to get your dogs used to being in the woods early. It is just different. And a lot of the VJPs that you run in, you're gonna be looking for cottontail rabbits in the woods. So it's just as important to expose them to everything out here as it is in the field. And maybe you'll get lucky and see a rabbit if you want. Not a big deal. Again, the main point is just getting them feeling comfortable out in these different environments and introducing whistle work. So for instance, if he starts going off to one side, I can introduce my turn whistle just to get his attention. Good. And don't do this a ton, but you'll also want to work on recall. So I've got treats in my pocket, so we can also work on calming. All the way and sit. We always have them sit when they come in. So taking them on just a 10 minute daily walk will do wonders for them because you can teach them how to use their nose. You can work on whistle commands and again, you're just building up their confidence. And you can extend the distance of those walks and try to find new terrain to put them in as they get older. Because you've purchased a gun dog puppy, in particular a drahar, I think that it's really important that you introduce them to a lot of different types of game as soon as possible. You need to build up your pup's confidence in not only finding this game, but retrieving it, having it in its mouth. So I like to start with dead game for my puppies. So let's talk a little bit about how to introduce your puppy to thawed game. Hopefully in preparation before getting a puppy, you set aside a few pieces of game in your freezer and now would be the time to pull one out and work with your puppy. Three month old puppies are more than capable to start doing some work outside with feathered and furred game. So I like to start off by introducing pups to game with a little bit of retrieve. So I have partially thawed out a pigeon. I say partially because I don't want it completely thawed, then it's too easy for them to play with it, rip it, tear it open, etc. So pull a piece of game out of your freezer. I like starting with a pigeon, something chucker size would be great. A quail would work well, a squirrel I've used in the past. Oops. Anything just so that we can get the pup used to carrying something that's uh, appropriate for their size. And the other thing you'll need is a check cord. Come here, Enzo. Sit. I wouldn't expect a three month old puppy to be very reliable on calm. So we are going to put the check cord on him. I've also got a pocket full of treats. I just brought some dog biscuits broken up into smaller pieces. For something as exciting as a bird, I don't want to just use dry dog food like we've been using for his other obedience work. Enzo, clearly we're fired up about being on a checkboard. Hey, this is what we're here for. Come here, sit. Good. Now that he knows I've got something exciting, ah, ah, ah. we're going to instill the same obedience we used inside where we want him to sit. back with it just wanted to blow by me good so here we want him to get used to sitting remember Enzo good good boy so give him that little bit of a treat so that you can take the bird away from him if you do have a dog that won't let it go you can pinch between their cheeks to get him to drop it but we need him to drop and again we want him to sit just like we had him inside so now we'll do a couple more rapid fire all right ready Sit. Stay. Ah, ah. Correct them if they try to break. Fetch. Good boy! Pretty typical where they want to play keep 
keep away. This is why we work so hard in the house with having them bring stuff to you. Sit. I'm getting a treat. Good boy. That's such a good dog. This is the first time we've done this with him and as we keep doing this, they'll get much better about just coming straight back to you and sitting no matter how prized the possession of a bird is. Enzo, come here buddy, sit, stay. Have the check cord on. Come here. Come on. Let's go finish. Sit. Yes, good. Very nice. As I mentioned earlier, we can easily correct it where he's holding it, you know, when we get to force fetch. But that's a great intro to frozen game for now. Now that your new puppy is comfortable with retrieving at least one type of game, it's a good time to introduce them to drags. And this is going to be an excellent drill that you can do with puppies and dogs of all ages. And I'll flip to some other video clips here where we can talk about how do you lay a drag and then how do you work a puppy on his first drag. And then we'll have another quick video just showing the puppy being successful in the drag. All right, now that we've introduced Enzo to frozen game and retrieves and our expectation of how we should bring the game back to us, it's time to start working on drag so that we can help him learn how to use and trust his nose. So I'm gonna use the same pigeon that we just played with him with minutes ago. I've got a starting spot marked with an X here. So to lay a drag, you're just gonna use any piece of rope. It doesn't really matter. Put it on the piece of game. And then I'm gonna walk out um, probably with a young puppy doing his first drag ever. 15 yards, 20 yards at most is really all we need. And I hate doing straight lines, but I don't want to put any hard angles yet. So we'll just do a gentle curve with this. out there I went about 15 yards just leave the game at the end for now there are basically two kinds of puppies those that are gonna go grab it and try to play keep away with it and mouth it pick it up pluck at it or those puppies that are gonna just grab it and bring it back to you because they know that they're gonna get a treat if you've got one of those dogs that has a ton of bad habits at that point we wouldn't leave the pigeon at the end I would pick it up and instead I would just leave treats at the end because we still want the nose work happening we want the tracking to happen. But because I don't know what Enzo's gonna be yet, and I hope with our earlier work that he's gonna be the kind that brings it back for a treat, I'm gonna let him go ahead and retrieve the bird, or at least give him the opportunity. So right now he is crated in the truck. We're gonna stop the video, I'll go grab him, we'll bring him back, and then we'll pick up the video again as we start him on this drag. Okay, so I grabbed Enzo out of his crate. It is important that you put the dog somewhere where they can't see you lay the drag. We really want them using their nose and not their eyes. So I've got his check cord back on so that I can collect him once he finds it. If he's not tracking, I'm not going to say anything. I'm just going to walk along the track with him just to get his attention back on it. And I think it's really important to have a routine to start with. So we've got our start spot here. I like to put dogs on a down before I send them just to get them focused. Enzo, sit. Ready? Okay. And you blow them down so their nose is right in that pigeon scent. attention on it. What is that?
job. So good. All right, so we didn't do a good job of tracking, but again, first drag ever. So he did pick up a scent and follow it, but it does take some repetition for them to learn to use their nose and be confident in it. But luckily once he found it, he was quick to bring it back. So um, I'm gonna do one more with him really quickly to see if now that he's just fetched it, if he connects the dots a little quicker about following the scent of it through the grass. All right, we don't have a lot of wind today, but I forgot to mention too, as you start laying drags, if you have any wind, always make sure the drag is downwind or crosswind. It really forces the pup to put their head down and track rather than picking their head up and air scenting. So right now we've got the track just laying slightly downwind, slightly at a crosswind. We're gonna give him another shot. All right, Enzo, come here. So again, make sure you have a good starting routine. Good. Such a good pup! You got this, buddy. That's such a good boy. Right out of the way, come on. Come here. Finish. Don't let him quit early. Good job. Good. Good job. All right. So we started off on the drag. He overran it a little bit, but he's already on his second turn figuring out that there's something out there for him to find just because I did that start routine the same. So he was looking for it, he kind of did a little independent search there and then found it. Which is great, that's the other point of these drags. We're just trying to teach them that there's something out there to find and they shouldn't come back empty handed and when they do bring us something they get a reward. So even here if he picks it up and brings it to me he'll get another treat. Good boy! Good job! Come on! Bring it away! Good job buddy! So again, I only did 10 or 12 yards or whatever on that one. So start small and then as they get successful, increase the distance over the next month or two until you're doing longer and longer drags. And uh, be sure you can switch out different types of game. Again, I'm starting with something easy for them to retrieve, but we increase the level of difficulty. But these are fun little drills we can do now with a little puppy instead of waiting until their force broke. I think that is a good place to start with activities that you can be working on this month with your three-month-old Deutschstrat Heart Puppy. These things should help you build a really strong foundation for JGHV testing, uh, your next hunting season, and many more to come. And hopefully they'll help you to create a wonderful pet and family member that you're also going to have for many years into the future. Next month, I'll try to put together another video about things we can work on with four-month-old Drought Heart Puppies. Uh, particularly, I'll be planning on introducing my puppy to live birds, as well as introducing him to blood tracking. So if you want to prepare for next month, uh, please try to get your hands on some live birds. Some pigeons would be the best. Uh, you can usually find some on Craigslist. And then also, if you could get a little bit of blood from a local butcher, should have some cow or pig blood available for you easily. Otherwise, thanks for taking the time to watch. Uh, glad that you're taking the opportunity to try to develop your puppy to his or her full potential and happy training.